Is it difficult for an older adult who has dementia to be accurate in their own self-assessment of the problem? What do people think is wrong? What do people think is wrong? People with dementia may not be able to be active participants. And let me ask Juliana from the Alzheimer's Association. What do they do? What kind of questions do they ask people who are there as part of the family consultation process at the Alzheimer's Association? What do you mean, what do they ask? I mean, how much conversation do they have with the person who has Alzheimer's or they think has Alzheimer's? Well, actually, it's separated so that caregivers are in one room and early stage patients are in another. And then we have separate support groups simultaneously. We don't really ask them much. I mean, we talk about it when we have a new member that comes in so that everyone has a chance to really talk about, well, yeah, I can't drive now either and that sort of stuff. Okay, okay. Because that would be something to even to find out. I don't know how they do to other placements, what kind of conversations they have with the person who has memory loss, what they do. I'm going to ask Katie because you work with patients all the time. Yeah, our patients with dementia are generally, with like one or two exceptions, impaired enough so that they don't understand they have dementia anymore. Okay, so that means they're in the second stage. Yeah, we can't really get much information from them. Like, I mean, when we get people for assessments, we have to have the family members there because the person can't explain. Okay, so that would be the difference. In the early stage, they're still cognizant. It's very important to talk about what experience is like. Kay just wrote a paper on a dementia support group that I'd like to refer to for the moment. One of the issues is that you would not separate them. Okay, so talking about the paper writing, a couple of you had questions about APA style, so I decided to take some time for that. I meant to bring the APA manual with me, but I forgot to do that. But how many of you actually use it, like use the actual book? Okay, that's good. So we use it. You use it in other classes. So every time I'm writing a manuscript, I have to go for it because there's so much to remember. I don't have it all memorized. But it's one of those purchases of a book that's really worth it. Even if you stop here with your formal education, um, because you'll be writing in agencies at some level when it comes in handy. So I would encourage you at some point along the line to get yourself a copy. But at the same time, there are some kind of quick and dirty ways to utilize the APA style of referencing in particular that you could find on the internet. So I'm going to show you one site, then I'm going to pass these around. And one of our faculty members a couple years ago actually put this together, which is a nice piece that we'll just go over briefly. And then I want you to ask you some specific questions relative to the APA style as well, because that will help me decide what I really should focus on today. So for the research paper we're doing in here,